Welcome to the Cash and Sports Show, brought to you by 22 Hours. This week, we're looking at the man leading the resurgence of African football, Dr. Patrice Motepe, and the impact he has had on the continent's most popular sport. But first, let's go through quick takes and look at the top African sports business news of the week. Welcome to your quick takes this week. We begin with news that the South African Rugby Union is reportedly close to a $75 million deal with Akili Sports Group. Akili is a firm that invests in the sports sector with a focus on leagues, teams, venues, media, technology, and development opportunities. The 1.4 billion Rand deal is reportedly on track to close in May, but still needs approval from SARU members. In the deal, Saru and Akili will form a new commercial company where Saru will be the majority shareholder and ASG will hold a roughly 20% stake. The goal is to expand sponsorship, broadcasting, content and match day revenue. Akili will profit from this increased revenue while Saru's share will fund the cost of running the amateur game in South Africa. The deal is very similar to the 2022 deal where Silver Lake paid around $134 million for an 8.5% share in a new entity with New Zealand Rugby. Is it a good deal? We don't know. Tell us what you think in the comments. In West Africa, Ghana's Vice President, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia, has promised to abolish the contentious 10% tax on sports betting and lotteries if elected president in the upcoming 2024 elections. This tax has been removed before and reintroduced in 2017 because it was difficult to implement in the first place. The Ghanaian economy has suffered since 2022, plunging the country into a full-blown economic recession, and taxes are an easy way for governments to generate more revenue. But with this being an election year, abolishing this tax is actually being used as a political tool because of this crazy stat. It's estimated that up to 45% of Ghanaians actually bet. And in 2021, the Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research found that 67% of the workforce in Ghana was self-employed. Promising to remove this tax could actually entice some voters. And that's crazy. And lastly, in East Africa, the Uganda Cricket Association has announced the appointment of John Walusimbi as its new CEO. He comes with 15 years of experience in both logistics and financial services. He's the former general manager at Blink Logistics and also served as the operations manager at KCB Bank Uganda. Ugandan cricket is growing really fast and the cricket cranes have qualified for their first ever T20 World Cup in the USA and West Indies in June this year. The Ugandan National Council of Sports has designated cricket as a priority sport in Uganda and increased its funding, while Leica Mobile and Plascon have also joined on as sponsors of the cricket cranes. And that's it for your quick takes this week. And now our story on Africa's number one football administrator. Dr. Patrice Mutsepe is a South African billionaire who may be in football today, but his roots are firmly in the soil with a glittering background in mining. I caught up with Fernal Anthony, a Germany-based chemical engineer who has worked in mining and manufacturing for over a decade to find out what set the man from Mamelodi apart from the rest in a cutthroat mining industry. Why is it so difficult to make a success of, of mines when, when they seem to be failing? So basically, when you're buying a mine, you're taking a bet on a few things. You're kind of betting on what's in the earth at that moment, how much of it is left. Yeah, you could do geological surveys and you're kind of taking a bet on the market demand in the future. When he was buying these mines, you need to understand that Anglo and all other mining houses would take a view on those assets. and They'd make a bet and hedge and say, well, it might not fit within what we view be part of, of our portfolio for the next 10 or 20 years. I read that he had um, a, a unique way of working with workers where ordinarily workers would receive a flat rated fee. He offered them less, but a sh but then a profit share. Sharing in the profits of your employer or the company in which you work for, we see it in many, in many different shapes or forms, right? Whether it be an annual bonus, whether it be um, shares in the company i think it's, it's widely practiced now but i think for back then 
it definitely was, um, I would say, I dare to say revolutionary at the time for Patrice to really have the vision to say, hey, we succeed if you succeed. I succeed if you succeed. You get to share in those spoils. And to do that in the 90s and in the early 2000s, um, yeah, I'm not too, I don't know of many companies that did that back then. Supersport United CEO and National Soccer League Executive Committee member, Stan Matthews, believes that the glory days of the 2010 FIFA World Cup are within touching distance. 2010 and how you felt at that time as a person in South Africa, apart from your super sport badge, how did that moment make you feel? The 2010 World Cup was a special place in history, obviously being the first World Cup in Africa, being hosted here by us. Um, this AFCON was a tremendous boost for what can be for us. This team and, and this group uh, under Hugo Bruis did a fantastic job of, I think, reigniting the energy, the passion, uh, the enthusiasm, the optimism um, of the South African football fan and gave us that little taste of what 2010 gave us, you know, which was being a part of global football. And I think that's what the South African football loving fan wants to see, that South Africa can mix it in the global world of football. South Africa's most frequently used starting 11 at the Africa Cup of Nations was comprised of eight current Mamelodi Sundowns players. A club formerly owned by current CAF president Patrice Mutsepe and now managed by his son Klopi. Sundowns is the standard. This AFCON tournament would not have happened if the synergy and the teamwork and the camaraderie that's been built amongst that nucleus of Sundowns players. Hugo Bruce fell back on that straight after the Mali game and it was a recipe that worked. And you've got to take your hats off to Sundowns and say it doesn't matter where they got all their players from. They blended them into a unit uh, 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 before and now under Rulani Mokwena. That's a very functional and competitive and uh, you know good unit that's born fruits for the national team. The person who's essentially moved us on from 2010 in terms of South Africa uh, and Africa is Patrice. He's, he's now the president of, of CAF, uh, former Mamelodi Sundowns chairman. His son now owns the club. Uh, your views around him and his leadership style and how he's moved African football forward? I think what the unique proposition of Dr. Motsepi, which in a way is a, a very big blessing, is he's a self-made successful man. And there's no way that he needed this job. He took it on as, as a calling and a passion and an opportunity for himself to make a difference, not only to South Africa, but to African football as a whole. And he has made a difference to South African football uh, in, in, in just in, in the transformational way of what he's done at Sundowns. And we saw the results on the pitch. I don't know Patrice uh, when he became uh, an owner of Sundowns. I knew him long before, before that time and interacted with him personally. At that time, I requested him to partner with us in Riesta's football uh, team. And he said to me, look, I'm not in a position to partner with you. I would rather uh, bring you into some of my establishment to to have shares in those establishments. And indeed, that's what he did. What's been fantastic about having somebody like him in the position, not needing the job, but because it's a passion, because it's a calling, because his name's attached uh, to it and he wants it to be a success, then you know that the attention to detail and the elevation of this product to be the best. To outline his vision for the continent, Dr. Mutsepe released a 10-point manifesto upon announcing his run for the CAF presidency. The ambitious targets included greater commercial success, development of the women's game, and improved refereeing standards. He's living out his manifesto. Obviously, things take time. Football terms, four years seems like a long time. It's not a long time. Already we're seeing so quickly the green shoots of a future CAF that is, you know, at another level. Should Patrice Mutsepe run and be elected for a second and final term, it would mean his leadership of CAF would conclude before 2030. Mr. Matthews believes this is truly time for Africa to stand up and be counted. I'm really optimistic that, that Dr. Motsepi's stint at CAF now is going to have a very positive spillover to football on the African continent. Let's not only look back and say, what's Patrice going to do for African football? What are we each doing for African football? We can change the narrative of football within Southern Africa because for too long now, North Africa has dominated us. 
And we as Southern Africa, not just South Africa, everything sub-Saharan Africa, we need to be more competitive and we want to get a team into the semi-finals of the World Cup. And we want to win the African Cup of Nations, not get a bronze. Mm. And we have the potential and the capacity and the leadership, current and future potential. Mm. It's all there. Brand African football is at an all-time high, with former players like Gary Neville praising the standard of the world-class AFCON tournament. With Africa being no stranger to mismanagement, we wanted to unpack the one aspect of the game that has long been overlooked and contributes to these failures. Next week, we touch on succession with Mam Riali Make sure you subscribe to our channel and have your notifications turned on. See you then.